In today's video, we'll discuss the most recent space news. But I have a brief question for you. Are you aware of NASA's revisited time frame for the Artemis moon missions? SpaceX's collaboration with the US Air Force on point-to-point -point space transportation, Sony's access to orbital photography for Earthbound artists, and NASA's Inspector General's warning? If you aren't, then this video is for you. If you answered yes, keep an eye out for more information. Let's get started. The United States Air Force has given SpaceX a five-year contract worth $102 million to showcase technology and capabilities for transporting military cargo and humanitarian goods around the world on a heavy rocket. This is the largest contract for rocket cargo ever given, and it isn't tied to any of SpaceX's launch vehicles. The Air Force Research Laboratory is leading the heavy rocket cargo program, which is looking into the usage of huge commercial rockets for worldwide logistics. They want to see if SpaceX Starship can be a better vehicle than a regular cargo plane for transporting both people and goods around the world. They want to know exactly what a rocket can do for cargo transport and what the true capacity, speed, and cost of the integrated systems are. The concept is that a Starship would launch into space from one spot on Earth and then return to land at another location. This is the only rocket on the market that can land with goods. Theoretically, we could go halfway around the world in under an hour. AFRL will be able to acquire vital data on environmental signatures and performance from SpaceX commercial orbital launches and booster landings. A thorough demonstration of large cargo transport and landing is also included in the contract. As a result, the US Air Force may sponsor SpaceX's first point-to-point -point trip. It's worth noting that launching big goods from orbit has never been done before. As a result, we have no idea what will happen. The ship is actually meant to land on Mars and the Moon, both of which, when compared to Earth, have substantially thinner atmospheres and lower gravity. Given that, landing on Earth will put a lot of strain on the ship's thermal protection system, landing propulsion, and landing legs. However, the worst case possibility is an explosion, which has already occurred in a dozen starships. There are some new details about the Artemis Moon mission. These issues were considered at NASA Advisory Council's Human Exploration and Operations Committee meeting on January 18th and 19th. We know the Artemis program has had some setbacks due to delays and technical challenges, but NASA appears to be very confident in its revised time frame right now. According to a working manifest released by officials, the first primitive voyage to the moon, Artemis 3, is set to begin on mid-2025. That's a one-year delay from the original objective, but it's not nearly as long as some had predicted. When the modified missions of the Artemis 4 was disclosed, things got much more fascinating. NASA has stated that it would not conduct a lunar landing, instead devoting its efforts to the construction of the Lunar Gateway Station, which will act as a hub for future crewed moon trips and allow crew transfers between the Orion spacecraft and the human landing system. This also provides scientists with a permanent lunar research station. The IHAB habitat model designed by the European Space Agency and the Japanese Space Agency JAXA will be delivered to the gateway in lunar orbit by the mission. The power and propulsion portion of the habitat and logistics outpost will launch together in late 2024 on SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket and spend a year spiraling out to a near rectilinear halo orbit around the moon. When Artemis 4 arrives in 2026, it will dock with these first gateway components. Artemis 4 will also be the first flight of the Space Launch System's Block 1B variant, which will replace the immediate cryogenic propulsion stage utilized on the first three SLS missions. This allows Artemis missions to carry extra payloads such as the IHAB module in addition to the Orion spacecraft. A lunar lander's availability will be another reason for not landing on Artemis 4. SpaceX was awarded NASA's Human Landing System Option A last year although it only covers the building of one lander and a single crew trip on Artemis 3, Future landings will be supported by NASA's Lunar Exploration Transportation Services Program, LETS. The purpose of LETS is to choose one or more companies to provide long-term landing services. All of the usual suspects have been invited to submit design concepts for the second lander, including North Origin, Northrop Grumman, Sierra Space, and everyone else who lost out to SpaceX on the first lander project. The LETS lander is expected to be ready in 2027, which implies it will be able to fly alongside Artemis 5. If that happens, Artemis 5 will be the first Artemis mission to use the portal as well as land on the moon. The mission will also transport Europe's Esprit refueling and communications module, as well as a robotic arm system for the gateway and an unpressurized lunar rover, according to the work manifest chart presented at NASA. All of these prospective missions, as well as the current manifest, are heavily reliant on NASA's progress on the early Artemis missions, beginning with Artemis 1. 
The uncrewed test flight on the SLS and Orion has no set launch date. But NASA's Assistant Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, Jim Free, informed the committee that the launch would be in March or April. We expect NASA to roll out the SLS to launch Complex 39B in mid-February for a fueling test and practice countdown termed a wet dress rehearsal in advance of that first flight. The SLS will return to the vehicle assembly facility for final preparations after that test before going to the launch pad. If the Artemis 1 launch proceeds as planned, it will send the Orion spacecraft on a three-week journey to orbit the moon before splashing down in the ocean. We also have some information on Sony Electric's plan of launching a CubeSat into orbit with one of their full-frame cameras and a zoom lens. This is part of their Star Sphere initiative, which is looking for artists, performers, and educators to collaborate with. The camera satellite's collaborative aspects include an online camera controller that connects through a ground station in Japan, allowing selected users to capture and record the Earth and stars using a wide range of camera work options while watching live videos in real time by operating the actual satellite via simple controls. Users will be able to frame photographs, move the satellite's camera, select settings, and photograph the Earth's different landscapes, vistas, and sunrises as seen from orbit. The camera will be able to freely point anywhere within a 360 degree radius, allowing it to be pointed not only at the ground, but also at the horizon and beyond. With pan, tilt, and zoom actions, users will be able to freely engage in camera work from a space-based perspective. Users will have the same control over camera settings such as ISO, aperture, and shutter speed as they have with any other digital camera. Users will be able to control a ground antenna directly for a period of roughly 10 minutes while viewing genuine live photos from the onboard camera when a satellite passes over it, which allows them to experience a direct connection between space and life on Earth. In a report released on January 11th, NASA's Inspector General warns that we may be running out of astronauts. NASA's astronaut roster may soon be reduced to bare minimum. The ISS and Artemis moon missions require support from the agency. Inspectors discovered that the agency's astronaut corps, which presently only has 44 active astronauts, could fall short of the minimal manifest requirement needed to adequately support the International Space Station and Artemis missions this year. The number of astronauts reached about 150 in the year 2000, but is presently at its lowest level since the 1970s. NASA is attempting to prevent this by announcing the recruitment of a new batch of astronauts in December 2021. However, by the time those new astronauts are eligible for flight assignments in 2024, NASA will have to deal with both the continuous attrition of the present flight crew and the necessity for extra personnel for the Artemis missions as they develop. NASA has yet to choose personnel for the Artemis 2 and 3 missions, which are set to launch in 2024 and 2025 respectively. While future missions are at least two years away, the analysis indicated that NASA might be overestimating the amount of time available to plan and implement the necessary training routine. It was observed that early in the ISS program, mission training might take up to five years before being shortened to two years for current missions. Beyond the new class of astronauts who have just begun training, the report did not specifically recommend that NASA raise the size of the astronaut corps. It did, however, urge that NASA reevaluate the present 15% safety margin for deciding the size of the roster, as well as recommendations for improved astronaut demographic data gathering and additional training advice. In a comment contained in the study, NASA stated that it agreed with the recommendations. What are your thoughts on this? Are there no longer any people who aspire to be astronauts? Or are we simply less prone to pursue huge goals these days? Comment, like, and subscribe. Adios till the next video.